A and M, A and M, A and M. We are now on SEC early predictions number 13. Nearing the end, we have Texas A and M and then the Vanderbilt Commodore. So we are at our last good team. And I tried to text us up for this. I got my Houston Texans jersey on. To be honest, I don't have any clue whether AM fans are majority Cowboys or Texans fans. Let me know down below in the comments. But you obviously know who this is. I'm not a Cow uh, I'm not a Texans fan, but I got it because of who's on the back. I got number 90, first overall pick back in 2014. Obviously, I'm a big South Carolina Gamecocks fan. None other than Jadeveon Clowney. If you are a Texans fan, my heart goes out for you with everything that's going on in that organization right now. You let go of JJ. Deshaun wants out. The whole situation with Jack Easterby and him and Bill O'Brien trading guys is beyond me. So if you are a Texans fan, I'm sorry. And also to all you A&M fans, I truly feel terrible for the fact that you guys did not get put in the playoffs last year. I was dying for you guys to make the playoff last year. Like if you saw... My playoff uh, selection show reaction, I wanted A&M in so bad. First of all, because I didn't think Notre Dame was good enough. Why would I want to go see two ACC teams get absolutely smacked in the playoff like they did Clemson and Notre Dame both get absolutely kicked in their own playoff games than the ACC from the playoffs? I honestly wouldn't care. Ban the ACC. I can't stand that conference. That's why we're talking SEC. That's why we're talking Texas A&M. Again, I said, tried to text this up if I could. I'd play some Cody Johnson right now, uh, but I'd get copyright. Love Cody Johnson. Love Cody Johnson. But let's get into the AM Aggies. From what they did last year to being, I think they finished fourth overall in the final rankings. Should have made the playoffs. They didn't. They go on. They win the Orange Bowl against North Carolina. We're going to take a full look into their 2020 season in just a bit. How is Texas A&M going to be able to do this season? You have a very good season last year. You guys are looking, they were so close to making that playoff spot, and now you're in a season where I think the SEC as a whole has gotten very weak. But then I look around at college football and be like, you know what, Noah, I think this is all college football. Like, it happens every single year. Players, teams lose players, and then they turn over. But you look at some of the guys that you lose in this league, like Trevor Lawrence has gone for Clemson, Justin Fields has gone for Ohio State, Mack is gone for Alabama. You got Devontae gone, Najee gone. You got tons of players on Alabama gone. A lot of the guys on the big teams are gone. And yes, Texas A&M had their fair share of losses, which we will get into later, but I'm feeling good about A&M this year. If you've watched any of these other videos, SEC early predictions videos, by the way, I do have a playlist of all of them if you want to go back and watch them. I say in every single one. I feel really good about AM, and and that's what we're going to get into today. By the way, shout out to one of our viewers. I'm sure he'll love this because he has been asking me for this AM video for a long time, and I know it took a while. I apologize for that, but it's because I had to do this in alphabetical order, and sadly, Texas a and finds themselves as second last in this. But Reed Childers, I know that he's been, sorry if I mispronounced your name, but I know that he's been a very loyal fan of this channel watching all the videos, commenting on them, waiting and dying for this Texas a and one. Well, guess what? It's finally here. So sit back, relax, and enjoy 2020 Texas a and season. Start off with a very close win against Vanderbilt, 17-12. I didn't know what to think of that game. I didn't know that if Texas a and was just a terrible team. I was watching my own Gamecocks play uh, Tennessee that night. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to think if Texas a and just was terrible this season or if Vanderbilt all of a sudden got really good. The next week you go out, you play the CBS game against Alabama, you'll lose that one. But then the rest of the season, you have a huge win against Florida the next week. You beat Mississippi State, you beat Arkansas, you beat South Carolina, you kill my Gamecocks in the worst game that we had all season. Beat LSU, beat Auburn, beat Tennessee, and then you beat North Carolina in the Orange Bowl. I was thrilled that Texas A&M won that. I did not want to see an ACC team win uh, the Orange Bowl, especially when there are so many people like me vouching for... Texas A&M to get into a playoff spot. If they would have lost to North Carolina, that would not have been look good on my part. So thank you for winning the Orange Bowl. Love that game. I can't remember who had that last run. There was someone who had, it wasn't Isaiah Spiller, but there was someone who had a monster run that he was basically tripped up and took it to the house after. Let me look at the roster here. Was it Anaya Smith? I think it was him. I think it was him who took had the crazy run, but that was... Truly amazing. Going into the 21 21 tw tw whoa, 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 whoa. 2021 schedule. 
for the Texas A&M Aggies this season. Texas A&M, I think one of the strengths or something to be optimistic about this season is definitely their schedule. I really like how it lines up. You got the teams that you want at home. Not too many tough away games. You still got some tough ones, but you don't have Alabama away, which is obviously the big one. That's the game that you have circled on your schedule because if you want to be a successful team this year, and not just the success as I mean like, oh, you finish runner-up to Alabama. No, if you want the success to make it to Atlanta, you have to beat Alabama. So starting off on Saturday, September 4th, you take on Kent State at home. You take on Cal- Cal- Colorado at home September 11th. The following week, then you got New Mexico at home uh, on the 18th. You got Arkansas at home on the 25th. You got Mississippi State at home on the 2nd. And you got Alabama at home on the 9th. What is that? Six games in a row at home. Holy what a homestand. This team gets their home fans for the first what is it? Oh, wait. Never mind. The uh, I forgot. The Texas A&M Arkansas one is played in a neutral site. So, And the Colorado one. So, yes, it says versus, but they're not home games. They're kind of home games, but they're not kind of not home games. But you get the most important game at home, the Alabama one, which is what really matters. Then you go to Missouri on the 16th, come back home, play in College Station against South Carolina on the 23rd. Then you play Auburn on the 6th. You go to Oxford, Mississippi on the 13th. You play Prairie View at home on November the 20th. And then you finish up your season in Death Valley on the 27th for your rivalry game. I mean, I said you're going to have some tough away games. Ole Miss and LSU. Those aren't going to be easy, especially that Ole Miss one, in my opinion, which we're going to get into that later. But you got the big game at home. I think that's all that matters. You got the Cowd Field advantage against Alabama. That's what you need. That's what you need this season. If you want success, you need Alabama at home. So huge, huge, huge schedule play out for the Texas A&M Aggies. Let's get into who they lost this season. We're going to get into what their starting lineup is going to look like this season. And then we're going to get into some of the recruits they brought in and how the recruiting class looks out this season. So starting off with some of the guys we lost, let's talk about the quarterback, Kellen Mon, who was an underrated guy in my opinion, for most of his career in college football. I don't think that he's going to be a top prospect quarterback at all, especially with the deep class that you have this year for the draft. But Kelamon is a solid guy. He's a solid quarterback. Had a really, really solid career for Texas A&M. Most of the, you lost so many offensive linemen. You lose Green, you lose Hawker, you lose McCollum. You lose more. And that was kind of the bread and butter of this team. Like, if you, if we're honest for a second... L- uh, Texas A&M, I think it was, I can't remember what game, but there was a stretch where they hadn't allowed any sacks. They were able to establish such a good running game with Isaiah Spiller because their offensive line was just so dominant and you're losing so much experience on there. That's going to hurt. It's going to sting. The experience of your offensive line, that's definitely a downfall this season because of just how good the guys were last year. So that's going to be something really, really tough for A&M to overcome this year and fill those holes. You look at the defensive side of the ball, Bobby Brown is gone. Buddy Johnson, those are your two big guys that you're losing. D-tackle, Bobby Brown, and then you got linebacker, Buddy Johnson. I think Bobby Brown is the main guy that you're looking at there. Huge presence on the inside. But again, you still have tons of experience on this defense, and I think that they are going to be good enough that this defense is definitely the bright spot of this season. But there is bits and pieces of this offense that I like. So let's take a look at what we're expecting from this starting lineup for Texas A&M. Haynes King, he's my quarterback. He's my quarterback for Texas A&M. I think he's going to be the guy. Of course, you could see. I don't see it happening. But Zach Cal, how do you say it? Calzada could be the guy. It could be the guy. I, I still think it's Haynes King. Everyone's saying it's Haynes King. And especially when I'm just an outsider looking in, I'm not one to go against the people of the team that I'm not a fan of. So, Haynes King is going to be the quarterback. Isaiah Spiller, I think, is one of the top offensive players in all of the SEC, so he's definitely going to be RB1. Then, wide receivers, you're going to have Lane, you're going to have DMAS, and you're going to have Chapman. I think D- D- Desmond DMAS was a five-star. If I can't remember, if I remember correctly, a couple years ago in the recruiting class, he was a five-star. So, he's a guy that I'm looking out for and being like, this guy can play football, take your big step this year. Let's see how you do. So that's going to be huge. And then at the tight end position, I think that this is where you're really getting a huge win. Jalen Weidermeyer, 
He's coming back. I think he was a huge piece of that offense that a lot of people looked over. Yes, it's just a tight end. Who was it a couple years ago that burned us when he played South Carolina? Jay Sternberger for Texas A&M. I think the tight ends at Texas A&M has been really quality the last couple years, and I think Weidermeyer is definitely a bright spot of this offense. If I look at the two bright spots, or three, I take three, I'm going to go Spiller, obviously. I'm going to go D-Mask because I think he's going to have a huge year, and I'm going to go Jalen Weidermeyer. I think those are three guys that are going to have huge seasons and guys that they need to step up to help Haynes King this season. With his first year taking the reins of Aggie football, you look at the defense, I think Michael Clemens is definitely one of the bigger guys on this team, a guy that you're going to have to have have massive plays. He has the experience on the edge. He was a guy, huge guy to come back after you lose Bobby Brown, especially on that line. He's a guy that is coming back that is going to help this Texas A&M defense. Again, I said it again. This is the strength of this team. This is what, if Texas A&M is going to go out and shock some people this year, I wouldn't say it's because of their offense, especially with the inexperience of the offensive line. It's going to be the defense. You look at the secondary, you got Jones, you got O'Neal, you got Richardson, you got Jones again, Jalen Jones and Miles Jones, and you got Young. This is a good team, and I think that that was the strength last year of this team. You Just good offensive plays. Like, we go back and look at some of the scores, excluding the Alabama game, and maybe the Florida game, you got 17, you got 14, you got 31, 3, 7, 20, 13, 27. In a season where we saw some of the most outrageous high-scoring ball games ever, Texas A&M's defense was really solid. So again, I'm going to say it again, that is the bright spot of this team this season. You look at the recruiting class, 2021 recruiting class for Texas A&M this season, fourth in the SEC, finished fourth in the SEC. Now you look at that and be like, Okay, so you got three teams above them. But you look at what that is nationally. Seventh nationally when you finish fourth in the SEC. Again, I say this every single time we have a situation like this where you don't finish in the top three of your conference, but you're still in the top ten of the nation. It's the SEC. It just means more here. The guys that you're able to pull, the classes that you're able to go up against and you're able to pull is absolutely insane. Texas A&M has the seventh best. I think they had... They have one five-star, and they just have a bunch of four-stars. So I'm jealous because South Carolina has neither one of those. But you look at some of the big guys. I'm going to go top three guys. Obviously, you have your big five-star in Turner, D-tackle, 21st in the nation out of all players, third best D-tackle in the country. Then you got Adelaide, fifth best. I, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Ton, ton Mize Adelaide. That's how I'm going to say it. I apologize if I mispronounced that. Fifth best defensive end in the nation. Four star, obviously. They only got one five star. And then picking out another guy, LJ Johnson, running back, fourth best in the country. And then the list goes on and on. You got some offensive guards, tackles, all purpose backs, safeties at the four star, wide receiver, defensive end, dual threat quarterback, defensive end, defensive end, cornerback. OT, it just goes on and on and on. You're filling, you're filling the offensive line, which is good to see, and you're filling some skill positions that you need on Texas A&M, just building to the depth and the talent of this team. So really, really good job in recruiting for the Texas A&M Aggies. That is courtesy of, of course, 24-7 Sports, as I always take it from because they are always reliable. Gig them 24-7, that's kind of the Texas A&M. I know every team has their own kind of 24-7 page. Like for us, South Carolina is the big spur Texas A&M is Gigum because Gigum Aggies, that's what they do. Going into the most exciting part of this video, the part that everyone's the most excited for, the reason that you watch this video, wins, toss-ups, and losses for the Texas A&M Aggies. Take this into perspective, listen to what I have to say because nothing drives me more crazy than when people don't listen to what I have to say and they try to argue with me in the comments section. I can't stand it. I have percentages down below for a reason. That is my win confidence in Texas A&M being able to win these games. So the games that I feel like are wins for Texas A&M, I have a 75 to 100% win confidence in them winning that game. And then toss-ups are anywhere from 74 to 26. And then losses are 25 anywhere to zero. So I'm going to break each of those down. So first of all, the wins, I got Kent State. I got Colorado. I got New Mexico. I got Arkansas. I got Mississippi State. I got Missouri, I got South Carolina, I got Auburn, I got Prairie, Prairie View. Those are all my wins. So that's that's a lot of wins right there. How many is that? That You have nine wins, in my opinion, if you are the Texas A&M Aggies this season. Looking at the toss-ups, 
I'm putting Ole Miss and LSU. You play in Ole Miss, I feel really good about Ole Miss this season, as highly as I've been talking about Texas A&M this season. Ole Miss is a team that I'm really high on, an amazing offense down there in Oxford. Lane Kiffin is really figuring out how to run a football program, an SEC program, and I feel like they, they could be a really lethal program in the SEC West this season. So that's a team to watch out for, especially that you have to travel there. If Ole Miss has some... What do I want to say? If they have something on the line for that game, let's say they go and upset Alabama earlier in the season or something like that and Ole Miss is a hot team, those fans are going to show up and they're going to show up rowdy. So that's one that I definitely don't want to write off the board as a Texas A&M win. I would favor Texas A&M over Ole Miss 100%, but I, it's not enough to say I'm 100% confident in Texas A&M to win that game. LSU also, LSU is not going to be as bad as they were this year in my opinion. You go to Death Valley, everyone's planning to have packed stadiums. It's your rivalry game. It's going to be senior night, blah, 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 blah. LSU is not a place that you want to play. 110% LSU is not a place you want to play. So that is definitely a game that I don't want to write off as a win. Again, I'm going to take Texas A&M favored in that one 100%, but I would not say I have 75% plus win confidence in Texas A&M winning that game. And then losses, you play Alabama at home, but Alabama's constantly stacked with talent. I did put Texas A&M in Alabama's toss-ups, but that's because I didn't want to just throw everyone in the win category for Alabama. I'm going to mark down Alabama as a loss. I hate to say it, I really do, but I honestly feel like Alabama is going to go undefeated again this season. I hate to say it, but it's going to happen. I just feel like it's going to happen. So best case scenario, worst case scenario, and then realistic. Best case scenario for Texas A&M, you go 12-0. You go 12-0. You win all your wins, you win your toss-ups, and you beat Alabama. You go to the SEC Championship. You probably win the SEC Championship because you're taking on Georgia most likely um, in that scenario. And if Texas A&M is hot, they're definitely a team that could win the SEC this season. Worst case scenario, I'm going to go 8-4. and four. You drop one of your win games. I see maybe Missouri would probably be the most likely if you're going to drop any of those games. Maybe Arkansas to lose any of those. And then you're going to lose both of your toss-ups and then you're going to lose to Alabama. That's worst case scenario. That's if Texas A&M is really not having a year this year. And then realistic, if I had to put money on what Texas A&M is going to go this year, I'm going 11-1. I'm taking that Alabama game as a loss and I'll take all the others as wins. Kind of the same as this year. Maybe 10-2. You might drop a game to Ole Miss or LSU. So I'm going 10-2, 11-1 as a realistic record for Texas A&M this season. So thank you guys so much for tuning in this video. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all of you who have been tuning into these videos. Do me a favor, subscribe if you haven't already, like the video, comment anything about the Texas A&M Aggies. I have a blast doing these videos. I love hearing from you guys because we're all SEC fans. We all just love college football. We all want it to be back. I know. So let's just keep talking about it. Stick around on this channel if you love college football because we do tons of college football content. So hit that sub button. Thank you for watching and definitely Come back next time.